Good morning, everybody. Uh, everybody that's uh, in the gallery, all the staff and councillors, and anybody that's watching online to our ordinary council meeting for Wednesday, the 23rd of August. And uh, thanks everyone for attending. Hopefully we can slide through this reasonably quickly. I don't think there's too much in this agenda that should cause too much concern, but we'll see how we go. So we go now to the leave of absence and apologies, and I'd like to uh, move that we bring 10.1 forward so that we can deal with that in our agenda. Uh, also, I just want to acknowledge Councillor Duff is on, uh, on Teams. He is in attending the meeting, but unfortunately couldn't make it to the chamber. So thanks, Councillor Duff. So bring 10.1 forward, extended leave uh, for Mayor Brett Otto. Uh, do I have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor Potter. All those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. Okay, so we'll slip through to 10.1. And the recommendation there is uh, that the South Burnett Regional Council grant Mayor Brett Otto a leave of absence for the period of the 31st of July 2023 to the 31st of October 2023 inclusive. Do I have a mover? Councillor Henshin, seconder. Councillor Potter. Um, obviously, I don't think we need to have any discussion around that. We'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. OK, we'll go back now to the uh, uh, agenda and I'd like to invite Pastor Andrew to come forward and uh, give our prayers for the day. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you for all those welcomes at the door and for this invitation to open council with prayer. Let's uh, consider a, a few verses from God's word from uh, the letter of St. James, the brother of our Lord Jesus, when he says, <clears throat> consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded, unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since we will pass away like the wind, like the wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Well, pure joy, really, in trial? It has pure joy in trial, but compared to the good outcome of what trials do in building us up, as we know, there's no Commonwealth gold without the uh, pain and the strain and the exercise. Now, James says, as any, if anyone lacks wisdom, which is his delightful way in saying, compared to God, who knows the outcome before the well is dug or the Commonwealth Games is agreed to, we need God's wisdom and God's foresight. None of us uh, uh, know much compared to the living God. Fact is, we all need God's perspective and anyone who thinks that they are smarter or richer than God, then lot number 99, Pioneer Road to Binga, is proof that they're wrong. We all know what 99 Pioneer Road to Binga is. It's the cemetery, isn't it? Uh, that is proof that uh, compared to God, we are like the grass, which is here today and is gone tomorrow. But James says, in spite of our incredible frailty as humans, God is pleased to help the humble who call upon him. And unlike some parents in this world, God actually treats us kindly and without criticism or finding fault, he says. For God delights in the humble and kind of heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Lord, we come before you today so that we might serve you with courage, serve our communities. A gracious and loving God, Father, 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. We grab, gather in your presence as we begin this Shire Council meeting. We ask for your guidance and wisdom as councillors as they make decisions today which will greatly impact our community. Grant us open hearts and open minds to listen to one another, respecting diverse perspectives and finding unity in their shared desire to serve. We particularly pray for Mayor Otto and any who through sickness or injury are away or struggling today in some way. Grant them healing in your good time. May your spirit guide discussions, leading them to make choices that honour your will and promote the well-being of business, families, the young and the elderly alike. Bless their time together and may your love and grace be evident in all that they do. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go well. Thanks, Pastor Andrew. Thanks for giving up your time this morning to come in and uh, hopefully you have an enjoyable rest of your day. Okay, we now move on to the uh, recognition of the traditional owners and Councillor Duff, are you able to do that? For us, please. Um, yes, um, I'd like to acknowledge country and the land where we meet this morning, the Walker, Walker land, and acknowledge the elders both past, present and emerging. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, declarations of interest. Any declarations, Councillors? All good? Nothing, Councillor Duff? You're good? No declaration? Good. Yep, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. That's beautiful. We'll go on now. Deputations and petitions. I don't believe we have any, Mr CEO. Okay, we now go on to seven. Uh, item seven on the agenda, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting. And uh, the officer's recommendation is that the minutes of the special council meeting held on the 21st of June 2023 be received. Do we have a mover? Councillor Erkin seconded. Councillor Potter, questions, comments, councillors? All good, we go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. 7.2, minutes of the council meeting held on the 19th of July, 2023, and that the uh, officer's recommendation that the minutes of the council meeting held on the 19th of July, 2023 be received and the recommendations therein be adopted. Do we have a mover? Councillor Erkin, seconder. Councillor Henshin, questions, comments? All good, go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 18 notices of motion. We have none. Absolutely brilliant. Item 9, business outstanding 9.1. Uh, the officer's recommendation that the business outstanding table for the ordinary council meeting be received for information. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, thank you. Seconder, Councillor Potter. Any comments or questions, councillors? All good. Go to the vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. Agenda 10, item 10.1 we've dealt with, 10.2, delegates at the LGAQ Annual Conference 2023. The officer's recommendation that Acting Mayor Gavin Jones and Councillor Jane Erkins attend the LGAQ Annual Conference as delegates. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, seconder. Councillor Shoemaker, count, uh, comments or questions on that one? Councillor uh, Shoemaker. Um, just want to confirm, do we need to add in, you know, um, myself, Councillor Henshin and Councillor Potter as um, observers into this motion or have, was my understanding those arrangements have already been made? Is this just to nominate the delegates or do we need yeah, to yeah. as well? Yeah, happy. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. I'm just having a little bit of computer problem. The PDF, uh, Adobe Reader's been updated and it's taken the bookmarks out. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I'm madly scrambling for the report. My apologies. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the the delegate, so it was um, Councillor Erkins was the proxy for the mayor if he was unable to attend or one of the delegates. So it was just to confirm the, the two delegates. I'll jack you like us to have a resolution for the delegates. So and then if there was any additions and alterations to it, uh, the one question I did have was Councillor Duff wasn't attending and just clarifying that if uh, Councillor Duff was going to attend, we could actually, um, and again, my apologies because I was searching for the report while well, it was moved, if Councillor Duff wanted to be added in as, a, as an extra observer. No, I'm 
No, um, <clears throat> thank you, um, CEO Mark. No, I'm, I'm not attending. Thank you. So, all good. Yeah, yep. So, we'll go to the votes. We've got that uh, moved by Councillor Hanch and seconded by Councillor Schumacher that the Acting Mayor Gavin Jones and Councillor Jane Erkins attend the LGAQ annual conference as delegates. Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 10.3 Webrock AGM. The officer's recommendation that uh, CEO Mark Pitt, Acting Mayor Gavin Jones and Councillor Duff be nominated as delegates on behalf of the South Burnett Regional Council. So we have a mover, Councillor Potter, seconded Councillor Shoemaker. We discussed this one and uh, worked that through a workshop. Any other comments before we go to the vote? If not, we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 10.4, rates notices, issue date change. So the officer's recommendation that the South Burnett Regional Council note the following changes to the August rates notices. One, change in issue date from the 18th of August 2023 to the 25th of August 2023. And two, change of due date from the 21st of September 2023 to the 28th of September 2023. Do we have a mover? Councillor Erkin, seconded Councillor Henschen. Comments, questions? Again, this was discussed through a workshop. Go to the vote. All those in favour? Oh, committee meeting, sorry. I'm sorry, I'll call it. My apologies for anyone watching out online. They weren't workshops, they were committee meetings, standing committees. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Councillor Duff, you're waving your hand. Do you have any comments or anything? Or you're good, you're voting for it? Okay, so we'll go to the vote again quickly. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 10.5. It's the Employment Services Council resolution that the officer's recommendation that the South Burnett Regional Council resolves it is satisfied that it would be impractical and disadvantageous for Council to invite quotes or tenders on certain occasions due to the specialised and confidential nature of the services provided to Council by the below list of recruitment service providers. One, Employment Matters Local. Two, FNP Recruitment. Three, Peak Services. Four, MacArthur. Five, Leading Roles. Six, Logo. And seven, Osborne Richardson. We have a mover. Councillor Shoemaker, seconded Councillor Henschen. Comments, anything there, councillors, on that issue? Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 10.6, monthly financial information. Uh, the officer's recommendation that the mon monthly financial report, including capital works and works for Queensland, as at the 31st of July 2023, be received and noted. A mover, Councillor Erkins, seconder, Councillor Shoemaker, comments, questions, councillors, Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. Just a question, page 147 or page six, just in relation to sales revenue, um, it says income received uh, under the RMPC contract relates to the 22-23 year and will be adjusted in August to be accrued back in the correct year. So I just wanted to confirm what's actually meant by that and does that impact or change our financial results at the end of the last financial year? Uh, yes, um, through you, Acting Mayor. Um, yes, yeah, so basically um, the invoice has been done up and it's been generated during um, July or early August. So it's hit currently in this financial year's um, income statement. However, because it does relate to last financial year, we have to take that income and put it into last financial year. So it will essentially then increase last financial year's income and it'll um, net out to zero. When you have a look at it next month, that invoice will be removed. Yep, thank you. Um, and just reading my notes here. Um, Page 150, the works in progress balance is currently sitting at a total of 
$8 million. No capitalization of projects will occur for this financial year until after the external auditors have finalized their review of council's financial statements for the 22-23 year. I just wanted to better uh, understand that. That's quite a lot of works in progress to be sitting in queue. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, through you, Acting Mayor. Um, so when council does up, um, obviously, their comprehensive revaluations and the information, um, it's generally around the end of March, April, that that goes out to the, the service providers that do, does all that revaluation information up for us. So from that point, um, we generally won't capitalise anything, so that way the data that they've been provided is what the asset register is based on. Um, and then we won't do any further capitalisations until the auditors are happy with how that revaluation and where the asset um, data is looking, and because otherwise it's quite difficult to go back. Um, and that's why then we sort of don't touch it until around that October once they've signed off on the financials. Okay, so that that amount of 22.47 isn't actually represent like in to be accurate a large portion of those funds would actually be used and the works completed the projects just haven't been capitalized yes that's correct yep. due to the process yep um i think it's checking trying so hard to go electronically great to see a local spend is up to 54.92 for July. No, I don't have any further questions. Thank you for the report. Okay, thanks, Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, any any further questions, councillors, or we go to the vote? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you very much. 10.7. The officer's recommendation is that subject to section 213 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, Council receives a 2023 interim management report from the Auditor General detailing the observation report of the South Burnett Regional Council's financial statements as presented for consideration. Do we have a mover? Councillor Schumacher, seconded Councillor Potter. Comments, Councillor Schumacher? Um, thank you, Acting Mayor. I would just like to propose, I would actually like some more information to come back. Um, I understand in relation to those deficiencies, um, uh, there is management still assessing the financial impact. I am, however, concerned about the reputational risk and would just ask that a report or some information <coughs> come back to Council as to when that's better understood as to how those deficiencies will actually be addressed. CEO Mark, is that something that's possible? I understand I'll go through corporate risk and order to yep. Yeah, me. yeah, no, no worries, Councillor. So the ones you're talking about the um, matters previously reported on page 177 and 178, those three? I so just so we do the report on the right one. 177. Yeah, it's, yes. it's tricky getting around. I think I'm going to have uh, to no, have an I'm Adobe not, I'm not talking, <laughs> lesson. No, sorry, I'm not talking about those ones. I'm talking about the deficiencies identified on page 175, the incorrect system calculation of interest on overdue rates. Oh, yep, okay. And um, I'm also uh, very keen to understand, don't get me wrong, um, yep. the item around business systems just... Um, I would like to better understand where that project's yep. actually Yeah, at. no, no. But um, certainly just that item, I can see that's a significant uh, reputational risk and we'd like yeah. to be across that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, preparation, so the... Um Oh, here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> um, so we've been working on this for some considerable period of time, so there will be a report. Absolutely. So if, if you're happy, we'll just mark it down as a question on notice yes, or request fine. for a report. Um, yeah, no, very pleased to bring back a report um, without without jumping to the answer. But it looks like what we uncovered is a, a statewide issue through software, um, So which has got our software provider actually working. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's... Look, 
anyway, yeah, no, rather than rather than me just speaking off the cuff there, no, there'll be a full and comprehensive okay. report come Thank back. You. But we'll note it in these minutes as well that those two get dealt with. That was, yeah, I was only just checking the page, which one you're making sure I got the right ones. Yep. Too easy. Yeah, thank you. Not certainly not making any um, assumptions, and just would appreciate a thorough understanding of that one. So thank you. No, fair and reasonable. The the the, the interest one is a is a significant issue, and um, yeah, getting to the bottom of it. Uh, and I would acknowledge Kerry and the work she's done already in in hours, hey Kerry, and uh, <laughs> hours and hours and hours of getting to the bottom of this. But yeah, no, it's it's um, a full report will come back. Thanks, Mr. CEO. So the uh, recommendation moved by Councillor Shoemaker, seconded by Councillor Potter, that the subject to section 213 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, Council receives a 2023 interim management report from the Auditor General detailing the observation report of South Burnett Regional Council's financial statements as presented for consideration. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. Move on to 11, 11.1. The officer's recommendation, it's uh, Gordon Brook Dam off-stream storage design funding program milestone requirement. Uh, the recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council, in line with requirements of the approved funding agreement under round six of the Building Our Regions program, one, council confirms that it has budgeted the recipient's financial contribution to the approved Building Our Region Round 6 funding application for the Gordon Brook Dam off-stream storage for Boonduma water detail design project. Two, council is committed to deliver the detailed design for the Gordon Brook Dam off-stream storage and ancillary works. And three, council acknowledges the responsibility for any funding shortfall if costs or other contributors change. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconded Councillor Erkins. Uh, questions, comments, councillors? If not, we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 12, Portfolio for Community Development, Arts and Heritage and Library Services. We have nothing. 13, Portfolio for Natural Resource Management, Rural Services, Agricultural Innovation, Compliance and Environmental Health. Nothing. 14. Portfolio for Disaster Management, Waste and Recycling Management, 14.1, Motion South Burnett's Water Challenges. So the officer's recommendation that Council as General Manager Infrastructure and CEO request a meeting with Acting Director General Linda Dove, Department of Regional Development, Manufacturing and Water, DRDMW, and provide a deputation with regards to the critically Criticality of South Burnett's water challenges. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, second Councillor Shoemaker. Comments and questions, councillors? Councillor Henshin. Thank you, I'll have one. Uh, Acting Mayor and through you, Chair, this was came about due to the Bush Council Convention down in Gundawindi where uh, the Acting Director Linda Dobe made the comment about water and our availability to grants and my fellow councillors were all there and heard it, but probably just for staff and the public out there, you know, the accessibility of grants when we get to a critical needs, my comment on that is it's too late when it's critical, so we look forward to this meeting with um, General Linda Doby. Yeah. Thank you. There's no other comments. We'll go to the vote there. The recommendation is moved by Councillor Hanson, second by Councillor Shoemaker. Uh, that the Council as General Manager Infrastructure and CEO request a meeting with Acting Director General Linda Dobe, Department of Regional Development, Manufacturing and Water, and provide a deputation with regards to the criticality of the South Burnett's water challenges. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 14.2, Blackbutt Transfer Station Commercial Waste. The officer's recommendation that the South Burnett Regional Council, one, offer a commercial waste collection service at the Blackbutt Transfer Station, two, the utilisation of this service to be reviewed after six months of use, and three, the operational budget for the Blackbutt Transfer Station be reviewed and amended accordingly at the first quarter budget review. We have a mover. Councillor Duff, seconder. Councillor Henshin, comments, questions, councillors? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 15. 
This is a portfolio for rural resilience, disaster recovery, parks, gardens and property and facility management, First Nations Affairs 15.1, the Wide Bay Burnett Regional Waste and Resource Recovery Plan, the officer's recommendation that the South Burnett Regional Council notes and supports the Wide Bay Burnett Regional Waste and Re Resource Recovery Plan, which is in short WBBRWRRP. We have a mover. Councillor Erkin, seconder. Councillor Potter, comments or questions around that, councillors? If not, go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 15-2, Mergen Hoop Pine Community Consultation. The officer's recommendation is that, one, the Hoop Pine located on the footpath in McAllister Street, Mergen, remains in situ and two ongoing 12 monthly tree inspections be conducted to monitor the health of the tree and a future report presented to council if the health of the tree changes and poses a safety concern to the community. Do we have a mover? Councillor Duff, seconder. Councillor Potter, comments, questions? Councillor mm. Duff, yes. I'd just like to um, ensure that that follow-up inspection happens. How do we how do we um do we have a program of retreat inspections across the region or how do we ensure that that happens on, on an ongoing basis? No worries councillor I'll put that straight across to manager Leanne Peterson. Through you acting mayor um yes um the parks and gardens section does have a register of all the trees um across the region that require re-inspection um every 12 months so yes we do have a annual program in place thank you that's great to hear okay so if there's no further questions moved by councillor duff second by councillor potter that the hoop point located on the footpath in McAllister Street, Mergen remains in situ and two ongoing 12 monthly tree inspections be conducted to monitor the health of the tree and a future report presented to council if the health of the tree changes and poses a safety concern to the community. All those in favour? Unanimous. 15.3, the Ros Gregor walking track consultation. And the officer's recommendation is that one, the South Burnett Regional Council receive the community consultation report for Ros Gregor walking track vegetation maintenance, and two, the to improve the Ros Gregor walking track drainage to prevent future hazards along the track through silt removal from track, resurface low-lying areas with deco, and place pipe under walking track to improve drainage and is there a part three there? I'm reading it off the screen, sorry. And council budget for the works at the 23-24 first quarter review. Do we have a mover? Councillor Erkin, seconded Councillor Potter. Comments or questions around that, councillors? Again, a straightforward thing, listening to the community. So we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Request from steaming back to Wandai event 15.4. The officer's recommendation is that the steaming back to Wandai organisers are allowed to remove, remove the old railway spikes from the old Fettler's shed for them to use as souvenirs at their steaming back to Wandai event in September 2023. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin. Seconder. Councillor Duff. Questions, comments? Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 15.5, endorsement of stage two redevelopment of QE2 Park, which is a good one. We'll go to the recommendation that the South Burnett Regional Council endorse the QE2 Park Mergen stage two redevelopment as per the project plan and project estimate. Do we have a mover? Councillor Shoemaker, seconder, Councillor Potter. Any comments or questions? Councillor Duff. Um, I was speaking to Leo Garrity this morning and he's um, not happy because he thinks that the cars should be wider. I have, I think the community generally wants the cars narrower, but I just um, want to flag that um, Leo, who is the president of the Community you know, Business Development Association, is, is passionate about putting those cars the same way. But I did say to him, I, I was of the belief, and I'm not sure, and I was, would like that clarified. If we had that cars and narrow, there may be some funding left out that we could 
potentially do the um, interpreting signage that Leo was interested in. Just wanting to get um, some feedback on the cost. Is, is the cost saving if we have the narrower paths? Manager Peterson. Um, through you, Acting Mayor, yes, there is a cost saving in going with the narrower footpaths. Um, so that, that is one reason why we have considered to, to go back to the 2.4 metres. Um, and basically, from the feedback that we've received from a number of people, there was concern about um, a, a high amount of concrete throughout the park taking away the grassed areas. So 2.4 would certainly um, allow us to, to cater for adequate um, pedestrians to use that footpath, as well as ensuring that we still meet our requirements for disability access and all, all access. So we're, we're happy with the 2.5 and the savings that we have there is going back into other works within that project. So at this stage, um, there is no funding available for the interpretive signage um, that we spoke about out up there at um, QE2 when we were doing our community consultation. But that's something that we can look at as we work through the project if there are savings through other components of the project or it would be um, an additional works that we would look at in the, in the future. Councillor Schumacher. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jones. I just wanted to note this is such an exciting project for Council to see QE2 Park actually completed. Um, it certainly demonstrates our commitment to improving the livability in our towns and villages. And it's great to see so many recently in our visits, they're using this space. Um, I really appreciate the staff's time and the team's time in being able to work together and speak with local businesses and community to discuss the project. Uh, it certainly is a busy part of Mergen and it's wonderful to see so many um, people using the space in stage one and um, I certainly look forward to seeing stage two completed. As uh, many have said, it's where business is done in Mergen and I think it's a really important project and really excited to see us get started. So thank you for bringing it forward. Thanks, Councillor. And yeah, I'd look to, to you, Leanne, and your staff, I had a conversation with you too. It was going to come to the next general meeting and uh, your work, um, I asked if you could possibly get it, and you did. So thank you for bringing it to this general meeting. And Councillor Duff, I, uh, Leo did contact me as well. And like on that day that we all went up there and attended, it was Leo and with Leo's support that only wanted the three metre wide paths and everyone else wanted the 2.4. So I think we've listened to the um, community up there. And I think my view is that that first stage one was is where all the hive of activity usually is and stage two will be a lesser it will still be utilized pretty pretty heavily but not to the extent that stage one will be but uh so i think we've listened to the community up there and i think it'll be a good thing and hopefully we can get it started and as soon as possible and see how we go hopefully it might be a christmas present for mergen let's see so Good job by all councillors and uh, and uh, listening to the community and getting some uh, some good news to going back to them. So we've got that move there by Councillor Shoemaker, second by Councillor Potter, that the South Burnett Regional Council endorses a QE2 Park Mergen Stage 2 redevelopment as per the project plan and the project estimate. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 156 the endorsement of stage two redevelopment of first settlers park Benarkin. and the officer's recommendation is that the south bennett regional council endorses the first settlers park Benarkin stage two redevelopment as per the project plan and project estimate do we have a mover councillor potter seconder councillor Erkins. pretty similar to the last one with mergen qe2 park we got any questions or comments councillors We've been down there and spoke with the community and they've certainly given us our feedback and I think the staff has taken that on board. So if not, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. 16, Portfolio for Tourism and Visitor Information Centres, Sport, Recreation and Commercial Enterprises. 16.1, Notice of Motion, Wandai Rail Celebrations. 
and the officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council provides $2,868.80 from the Community Grants August funding round for a plaque and time capsule to unveil as part of the town's 120 year celebration of the train coming to Wandai and that council support their request for in-kind support of one marquee, one skip bin, four wheelie bins and 30 chairs. Do we have a mover? Councillor Henshin, do we have a seconder? Councillor Duff, comments, questions. We were up there yesterday speaking about time capsules and everything else. Everything seems to be moving along pretty good. Councillor Henshin, anything? Yeah, thank you through you, uh, Deputy Mayor. We did, and thank you to the councillors that came down there yesterday for the community consultation. There was just some conversation around where the position of it was. The, the actual uh, idea of a time capsule there is an exciting thing and what goes in it we saw in Wurulan how exciting that was after 50 years and they've put another one down there. So the same to happen in, in Wurulan. Not sure whether I'll get to see it in 30 years time but it'll be a great initiative taken on by those people. The positioning of it, it is set that if in 10, 20 or so years time it can be re repositioned in the event of something major development wise in that park. So a good result all around. Thank you. Any other comments, councillors? If not, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 16.2, licence agreement, high yield aviation patrol limited, site 13, Wandai Aerodrome. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council, in accordance with S2361C7, of the Local Government Regulation 2012 enter into a licence agreement with the Higher Yield Aviation Patrol Limited for Site 13 as part of Lot 5 on RP 83495 for a term of five years with an option for five years for a rental amount of $1,620 plus GST per annum with annual CPI reviews. And two, South Burnett Regional Council delegates to the Chief Executive Officer the power to negotiate, finalise and execute the licence to occupy between Council and the High Yield Aviation Petroleum Limited on terms and conditions the Chief Executive Officer considers are satisfactory to Council. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconded Councillor Erkins. Comments, questions, Councillors? Straightforward, go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 16.3, renewal of licence agreement, Baramba Aero Club, areas 6 and 11. The officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council, in accordance with S2361B2 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, enter into a licence agreement with the Baramba District Aero Club Incorporated for Area 6 and 11 as part of Lot 5 on RP 83495 for a term of four years with an option for five years for a rental amount of $287.95 plus GST per annum with annual CPI reviews and two, South Burnett Regional Council delegates to the Chief Executive Officer the power to negotiate, finalise and execute the licence to occupy between Council and the Baramba District Aero Club Inc on terms and conditions the Chief Executive Officer considers are satisfactory to Council. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter. Seconded, Councillor Henshin. Any comments or questions, Councillors? Councillor Potter. Yeah, thank you. Through you, Acting Mayor. Look, I've read through this, and in the previous one, it's actually got in the um, in the background, it's actually mentioned Wandai Aerodrome. But reading through this is actually does, I, I know it's the Wandai Aerodrome, but reading through this, Wandai Aerodrome is not mentioned anywhere. So I'm just wondering whether that could be put in there, even if it's in the background section, because I do believe that the community needs to know it, it's one day. Good question. I'll hand over to the CEO or manager, Jen, for a uh, response. Jen? Um, yes, I can confirm that it is one day aerodrome and lot five on RP83495 is the lot on plan for aerodrome. Happy to just the, just the way we articulate it for the lease. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jen. So any more questions, councillors? If not, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 16.4. 
the Visit South Burnett 2023-2024 agreement and the officer's recommendation is that one South Burnett Regional Council enters into an agreement as amended with Visit South Burnett Inc for the 23-24 financial year for the purpose of delivering tourism initiatives, promotions of attractions and experiences and develop of planning documents that support sustainable tourism in the region. Two, South Burnett Regional Council provides funding to the value of $70,000 plus GST and three, South Burnett Regional Council delegates to the Chief Executive Officer the power to negotiate, finalise and execute the agreement between Council and Visit South Burnett Inc on terms and conditions the Chief Executive Officer reasonably considers are satisfactory to Council. Councillor Erkins. Um, through you, Acting Mayor, I'd just like to move that we lay this on the table until we have an opportunity to meet. I'd like to meet with um, Visit South Burnett, with, maybe with yourself, just to um, discuss some of those terms that we're going back to them with. So that's a procedural motion from Councillor Erkins. Do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Shoemaker? No questions, we go straight to the vote. We'll go straight to the vote on that, that uh, Councillor Erkins has moved, seconded by Councillor Shoemaker, that the officer's recommendation lay on the table for further information to come back. Do we, all those in favour? So we have five. Councillor Duff, uh, all those against? Okay, so we have Councillor Shoemaker, Councillor Erkins, Councillor Potter, Councillor Henshin and Councillor Jones in favour and against Councillor Duff. So the uh, motion to leave the uh, recommendation lay on the table has been carried five votes to one. Okay, so what now, Count, Mr. CEO, we just move on to the next one? Yeah, beautiful. 16.5 QICA conference. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council submit an expression of interest to host the 24 QICA conference. Do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconded. Councillor Erkins. Okay, comments, questions, councillors? I can't see any harm in having a go. I think it'll be good for tourism and bringing other people in. So uh, if not, we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. 16.6, .6, request for sponsorship, Red Earth Leadership Forum 2023. Uh, now, the officer's recommendation that the matter be lifted from the table and the South Burnett Regional Council sponsor the Red Earth Leadership event by support for hall hire fees for the Mergentown Hall be waived to the value of $510 in kind, equipment hire $300 and PA hire $1,000. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we have to deal with here is that uh, the matter be lifted from the table. So do we have a mover? Councillor Potter. Seconded, Councillor Shoemaker. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Okay, now we go to option two or number two on the agenda, which is that the South Burnett Regional Council sponsor Red Earth Leadership event by support for one, hall hire fees for the Mergentown Hall be waived to the value of $510 in kind. Two, equipment hire $300 and three, PA hire $1,000. So do we have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconder. Councillor Duff. Comments, questions, councillors? Councillor Erkins. Thank you. Um, I would like to know the PA hire. Do, do council have a PA? I believe that um, it's for public speaking. It's not actually for um, musicians or anything, so I would have thought that we may we may have one. But one of the other things, you know, I would still like to meet with Red Earth, maybe invite them to one of our community consultations, because I really do not have um, much of an idea of what they actually do, and I would welcome the opportunity to hear what their role is in the community. The, um, yeah, thanks, Councillor. Uh, through you, Acting Mayor, the PA system that we have wouldn't be, well, they, they've, they've hired their own equipment. So, and again, we had tried to get, but uh, timing was difficult between the two meetings to get a full meeting. Um, the CEO of uh, Red Earth was 
in town for another meeting and came and clarified. In the attachment, they drew, so the part of the confusion, and, and thanks for the opportunity to, to talk, because part of the confusion with the last one, there's a line above the table that says um, sponsor in full or in part, but their expectation was that council would never sponsor in full. Uh, whilst I'd graciously receive it, they were, these were the bits that they were particularly requesting. Um, yep, absolutely. I think they would love to come and meet with us and full council and they would bring as many of their executive as they can and we'd organise it and also do joint statements and opportunities to cooperate down the track. Uh, so that was the clarification. It was just, and through no fault of anyone, when I looked at the table too, the way the table read versus the line above it, you would think that was the full request, so it was the opportunity to clarify. It's put forward, that, that would be the things I'd like. Certainly the hall hire is, is, is an easy one for us to do. Um, if council wasn't inclined to do the equipment hire or the PA, that's, that's um, um, totally, totally at your discretion, but that's uh, a contribution of no more than 18 or $810 is, is the maximum that they were um, asking for. And yes, we will organise that meeting. I'll make a note. Council Schumacher. Uh, thank you, Acting Mayor. Um, just question whether we shouldn't add um, the nominate, uh, nominate the representatives from the South Bennett Regional Council to attend um, as part of this motion. I did attend last year and um, did um, really get a lot out of the session. I think it is a really valuable um, day and would be worthwhile for other councillors to attend. Um, on another note, I'd certainly like to put my name forward for that. Um, really do look forward to the leadership forum. I think the timing is really good. The theme, regional circularity co-op, is a key theme that we are exploring through the Regional Economic Futures Fund um, and projects associated with that. Um, so I think it's a wonderful opportunity for our council to go, be at the table, sort of listen to some of the views, ideas of other industry represent re representatives and certainly other members of our community. I'm fully supportive of the motion as at hand. I do think that clarification did have to come through. The, the previous proposal did read as, um, as council would be contributing a lot more to this event. So I'm fully supportive of the um, request that comes forward and really do look forward to the opportunity to listen and be part of the discussion. So just if there is an opportunity acting now, I would certainly like to add that myself would like to attend and I'm sure many of you would as well. Just on that, before we go to Councillor Erkins, I thought, was there an invitation extended to all councillors to attend that? Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I would think, as Councillor Shoemaker said, um, great opportunity for us all to attend. I, I think I've accepted to go, and if anybody else was, yeah. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to clarify. I, um, in previous other events like this, I've purchased my own ticket. I'm not sure if that's included in the invitation that came through. I'll have to go and review the email. I'm sorry, I did miss that email, so I'll go back and see if I can find it. But fully agree I think we should all be there I know last year at Collite um, it coincided with the Bush Council's conference um, so some of our colleagues were unable to attend and I'm not sure if any of my fellow councillors other than myself did attend last year so yeah it would be really great to have everybody in attendance Mr CEO yeah uh, I'm just bringing up I had um, been holding off for a clash of dates but certainly would like to go myself um, I'm not sure if there's even a if there's a charge, um, council, but we're happy to. Fifty-five dollars. Was it yeah. fifty-five? Yep, there it is. It's just come up now, so we're very happy to to chuck in a registration for anyone who hasn't registered. So, uh, just yeah, so we'll mark you down, Kirst, and anyone else who hasn't registered, just let us know, and um, yeah, we'll we'll put them through. Well, can I just make it very simple? Right now would be a good opportunity for councillors if. If you want to indicate that you want to attend that, what was the actual date, Mr. Seven. Seventh. Is, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, and given um, so, what's that? Da, 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 so, um, I, I don't think it's anyway. Yep. No, we'll we'll put those through, Mayor, Acting Mayor. 
Yeah, thank you. So all council council it up are you saying you want to go? Yep, so council it up a definite. I'll be I'll be attending Mr CEO. Has anyone registered and paid themselves yet or no? No, no, well we'll we'll do it as a bulk job. We'll see if we can get a, a bit of a discount. <laughs> okay, Council Erkins. I don't want to labour the point. However, PA hire of a thousand dollars, surely Council have a PA system. I have been to um, council events before, and I just, yeah, you know, I don't want to be petty about this, but a thousand dollars to hire a PA, if we have one, would surely be a good cost saving for um, Red Earth community and a good cost saving for our ratepayers. And I have been, I know I attended a um, function in Mergham where we did have a PA system there when we had discussions on, I think it was the um, foot and mouth disease, we had a PA there. So just asking whether we do possibly, I mean really I've got one I could lend them. <laughs> yeah, Councillor, it's not my event, so that was the request we have, they've not asked, they don't want a, uh, um, yeah, they, they they want to go down their own path with that. So I'm agnostic to it. If your council wants to assist them with the hire, they can. If they if you don't, we'll just amend it and drop that bit out. I really don't mind at all either way. But yeah, so they're not chasing our equipment. They they've got their own setup. So exactly that, Mr. CEO. So from the initial twenty five thousand dollars that we all thought they were asking for, they've come back to uh, eighteen hundred and ten dollars which I think is fine. It's an organisation that does some good work, so I'm happy for this to go through. I, I will be supporting it, and I understand Councillor Erkins that, uh, wants to have a chat with uh, with the Red Earth com uh, Committee, and I'm sure that we can organise that and they can come in and address the whole whole council, Mr CEO. That would be a fair comment. So are you happy with that, Councillor Erkins? OK, so we'll go with the... Uh, the resolution there, moved by Councillor Potter, seconded by Councillor Duff, that the South Bennett Regional Council sponsor Red Earth Leadership Event by support for one hall high fee, higher fees for the, for the, <laughs> excuse me, for the Mergen Town Hall be waived to the value of 510 in kind, two equipment hire $300 and three PA hire for a thousand. We go to the vote, all those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. Now and we've and acting, acting that, mayor, if I just may yes. say, they were very, they, they were very upset that there was a misconstrue. So it was yeah. certainly never their intent. And I just, for anyone who uh, was watching and thought they were asking for, they were, they were, they were mortified that that came through as it was. And so certainly, that was never their intent. No, and Mr. CEO, when Mel came and spoke to us, she was quite upset. And um, uh, yourself and uh, Mel worked with some media outlets to address the uh, negativity that uh, got started. So, yeah, all good. Now, we have an item, Mr CEO, that you want to bring forward into this uh, portfolio, so I'll hand over to you. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a nice pass because it wasn't, I wasn't necessarily bringing it forward, but it was... Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hospital pass. Um, the yeah, no councillor uh, acting mayor had raised uh, so it would be a matter of urgency given the timing that there's been a lot of inquiries about the ticketing and clarification for the ticking at the day of the dam and the acting mayor asked us to to just uh, where it could come on the agenda so um, the spoke to general manager and manager yesterday so the day at the dam so firstly acting mayor it would be a procedural resolution because it's not on the agenda does council wish to talk about the ticket price for the day of the dam so yeah leave of the meeting to to discuss it please okay so very sorry mr ceo to uh, put you on the spot like that i should have uh that, uh, anyway so can i i will move a procedural motion that we discuss the ticket pricing of the day at the dams that is due or the date of that event is 28th of September, October. So uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Shoemaker. Um, do I? OK, we'll go straight to the vote to uh, start the conversation. So all those in favour? Thank you. So 
I guess. Yeah, you, I'll hand over to you first. So, so uh, Acting Mayor raised it last week, uh, as we spoke yesterday. The Day of the Dam um, is an adult-centric event. It's, it's, a, it's a licensed event and there is no activity for youths or children at the event. There's no jumping castles, there's things like that. So it's a music festival. But, but given that, um, so the ticketing was always, is, is always and has always been geared around adults. Um, given that there's been uh, an inquiry, Tiano, have you got that? Um, certainly changing the back end is not a difficult thing uh, and introducing, a, 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 I call it children's, but a, a youth category. Um, accepting and, and knowing that there is no, no activity. So it starts at um, about midday, Jen, I think, and then runs through to 10 o'clock in the evening. It's, it's going to be a great event. There's um, some serious entertainers uh, are there. Um, so if council was of a mind that it wanted to introduce a, uh, an under 18 categories, the children, uh, children under 12, no charge. Uh, children 12 to 18 or youths 12 to 18 is $40 half price and over 18 is 80 and then that will just clarify it and we can we can roll with that. Uh, there's a couple of others getting around and I will take this opportunity. There was a um, an early draft of a poster that has actually been circulated which has been corrected by um, by one of the entertainment acts good faith and they've sent it around so we've had feedback on that that it's missing this band and that it's not our poster and it's an earlier draft that was circulated by parties independent to us which was great uh, the, the artists are really getting in behind it now and driving some of the publicity it is going to be a terrific day um, so uh, yeah so just for a simple matter of um, clarifying so that everyone's on the same page if council wants to introduce a a children youth category. Um, that's that's the that's the suggestion. Thanks, Mr. CEO. So I got a lot of phone calls, and I don't know whether any of the others. I believe Councillor Hanson got a fair few, and there's a lot of social media around the fact that. Um, and I'm happy to be corrected, but the information I was getting was that eighty dollars a ticket was for children as well. And some of the comments, uh, I'll just give you some of the comments was. You can go to the Gympie Muster for four days for $200, under 12 kids are free, and other kids um, at different prices and all that sort of stuff. How come we're going um, to a one-day event, have to pay $80 and kids at the same price? So that was the issue, and I said to them that I would just bring it forward, and it's entirely up to the council, and we do need to back our staff. Um, they've been working very hard on this event, um, and they probably would have a reason that they were trying to charge children $80. But um, I think if you're going to take a family of four, just say mum, dad and two kids at a 10-year-old, that's $320. Now, the value for those two kids under 10, maybe I wouldn't be going. That's just my thoughts on it. So open it up to every all the councillors, your thoughts on it and pricing and what you think would be fair, keeping in mind that the staff have obviously done this for a reason, but we have had a lot of um, pushback, I certainly have, and um, I believe that there may be some cancellations that are happening because of the pricing. I don't know that for sure. I've only got that second hand. But councillors, here's your opportunity to uh, have your say input into it. So. Councillor Henshin. Thank you, um, Acting Chair, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I did. I'm sure everyone else did. Some of them were quite irate. Some of them were, um, and understandably so. And in one example, I had two grandparents ring me with two daughters with four grandchildren. That's $640. There's no way that family was going to go to the dam. They desperately wanted to go. They, that's their their entertainment and to be able to take their daughters and their grandchildren along to that was just not going to happen. So understandably they were quite distressed about that. Um, I, I don't know where or how and I don't think we need to go down the path of the $80 for children. Anyone in this day and age and Councillor Erkins you know only too well and suggest in this chamber regularly about how tough people are doing it, no one's going to take their kids to it wonderful event like that and pay $80, especially when there's nothing there 
for their kids outside of music. When I say that, I say that respectfully to all the bands and the people that are playing there, of course. But that's meant, as you said, CEO Mark, there's nothing there for the kids. There's no jumping castles that they can go and probably have a swim in the dam if they like. But um, personally, yeah, look, what's been tabled there to us at 12, under 12, no charge, 12 to $18.40 and over $18.80. Um, I would be comfortable with that, or even if those age groups were changed in some shape or form, I'm open to suggestions on the floor uh, to all of you, my fellow colleagues, with, and of course you have families as well. Um, so I appreciate your input and thoughts on this as well, but personally, I cannot support a fee of $80 for children. Thank you, Acting Mayor. <laughs> Just, yeah, just, and certainly, yeah. yeah, the intention was never to charge children $80. It's an adult event, so it's a music festival. So, and I don't know if anyone in recent years, but a lot of the music festivals, they aren't child friendly. So, because of the, particularly with the licensed aspect of them. So, I suppose, just, and, and certainly not disagreeing, it, and hence, hence why it's not, there was never the in, the intent to charge. It's, it's a, it was meant for an over 18 event. Now, that probably goes back to to earlier uh, discussions about it, about whether it should have been not an adult only, but that should have been made more clear, possibly. But certainly, uh, once started people indicating that they were interested in bringing the kids, and and like a ten year old from if you're there for the whole show from twelve to ten, it's going to be a big day for for kids. But anyway, yeah. So, and certainly not to disagree with you, councillor. It, it wasn't yeah. the intention though to charge children eighty dollars. It just was targeted at over 18s. I, Peter, point. CA, but the situation that we find ourselves in now, it's it's being promoted or was being promoted, as far as I'm aware, as a family friendly event. I don't know that there was any, and I guess, is Jen, do you know, not to put you on the spot or anything like that, but I guess questions, I, I, I guess where we're, the phone calls and the contact that I've had, they've said, well, you know, promoting, as a fam, uh, promoting it as a family friendly event and charging children the same price as an adult is not fair. Um, do you have any comments or any information to help us sort of work through it? On, on, I don't want to, you don't have to say anything that you don't want to, obviously, I'm not asking you that, but I guess we find ourselves in a situation now where the public think it's been promoted as a family friendly event. And as the CEO said, it's probably not a situation where it's suitable for kids around 12 or 14 year old or younger. Um, but that's the situation we find ourselves in and we want to try and make it as popular as possible with the most attendance. So I guess I'm looking for some sort of direction, information from you as because you've been a part of it and complete and please answer as you see fit. No pressure at all. Um, through you, thank you, Deputy Mayor. I'd probably just reiterate the CEO's comments that um, it is a licensed event and yes, I appreciate that if you were looking to take a 10-year-old to this concert, $80 would be an exceptionally high price to pay. Um, but it's also a licensed event. There will be obviously alcohol service there. Um, the only other activity that will be part of that event is the social services hubs, which to get that demographic of people essentially between 18 and 30, Engaging with our social services is probably one of the hardest demographics to get, um, particularly in disaster recovery or, or disaster preparedness. Um, so it was about having an event that has the carrot to get that demographic to the event um, and engaging in those few social services that are gonna be there. Um, we have such a large range of other family friendly or more child orientated activities in our community that are um, at that under 18, but certainly to that younger demographic um, in our community. Um, so I guess we were, we were looking at a specific demographic that we were targeting um, and that $80 price we felt was appropriate um, for, that, for that over 18s to 30 year old. Um, we also looked at it through the prism of our budget. Um, 
yes, it is grant funded, but the grant funding was never going to cover all the event costs, but it has to be cost neutral. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. So it was important that we ensured that we had enough revenue coming from proposed ticket sales to cover all costs as well. Um, so that was the other, you know, I guess, risk to council was that we didn't have to come back and say, look, we only charged $40 a ticket, but now we're, we're short on covering our operational costs and the council would have to contribute general ratepayers funds to that. So that was something that we deeply considered as well. Um, I, as a parent, I wouldn't be taking my 10 year old and nothing to do with the ticket price. I just, I wouldn't be taking, I just don't think it would be an appropriate event for a 10 year old to go to. Um, with regards to marketing, I'm, I guess it's people's unconscious bias or perceptions on marketing material. To me, the marketing material is not designed for, for under, certainly not under 15s. It's the, even down to the way it's designed. Um, we're not putting on there that there's, you know, free kids events or face painting or things like that. It, it's very much all about the artists, um, both our local and, and the international artists. It's about targeting those people in our community too that will go out of town and go and buy a ticket at Boondle and spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars of accommodation in Brisbane. We're asking them to stay in our community and have a fun weekend in our community. So I can definitely understand where, where you're coming from, um, but that's... Um, that's also... Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's okay. Um, so that's where we're coming. Um, I guess I'd just like to share, we, we had a little bit of a chat with um, media yesterday about just how the event itself is tracking. We've had um, 11,000 people reached by those Facebook posts just through council's posts. Um, as of close of business yesterday, we had already sold 200 tickets. Um, so that's, you know, a fair, and it's only been on sale since Friday. Um, so I guess I can, I can definitely understand that people were probably had an assumption about what the event would be and the reality is, is different. Um, but that, that was, I guess, our position when we organised the event. So I hope that provides a little bit more information for you. Yeah, no, that's good. And I, I totally understand and support that. I, I do. But anyway, we'll continue the conversation and see where we end up. Councillor Potter. Yeah, thank you, Acting Mayor. Look, I think the fact that there's community stalls and things like that, there's things that... Um, I mean, I don't know what those community stores are that are involved with there, but to me, that's something that um, I would take my children to. So I, I do believe that we should be having that extra, that $40 I do agree with, and I will be voting for this, um, that $40 for the 12 to 18s, because I do believe that um, it's, it's warranted. And, you know, there are some people that go to these things that don't drink, just, and they go there and they, you can have a good time without drinking, and that's why they feel like they can take their kids. So, hence, I would go and I would take my children. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. It's through you, um, Acting Mayor. I have a couple of concerns. One, you know, I would have liked to have had a little more um, contribution into what was happening. Two, I would like to know what the funding actually was and what's the funding for that we're doing this out of? Um, Sorry, Jen. So through, through the Dep uh, Deputy Mayor, the funding is Category C uh, departmental flood recovery funding. So it was, it was always the project plan was about celebrating the dam being full um, and basically celebrating the positivity out of post flood. Um, irony of irony is that it hasn't really felt like it's rained since. Um, yeah. But um, that was, that was, it was about, again, targeting that demographic that um, aren't seen as particularly vulnerable, but can be um, to, to flood or to disasters and giving them an opportunity to, to have a great, great Saturday yeah. afternoon. Okay. I, I also understand that some people will pay a lot of money to go down and see a concert in Brisbane. But one of the things is there are many people in our community who cannot afford to do that type of thing. So, you know, I was disappointed in $80 all up because I just, 
believe that with funding, it would have been nice. I understand, and I've, I've checked all the um, bands out that are going to be performing, and they are fabulous. I'm not taking anything away from that. I think they will attract also a younger audience that, um, you know, around the 18, under and over, they will attract. But I was, I was a little disappointed in the, in the ticket price. I thought it was going to be um, cheaper for our community to be able to attend. I do understand, but the the um, the standard of musicians that we've got, you know, you've got to pay for those musicians, and I'm assuming that we've paid a fair bit for them. Probably, in my opinion, I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit less of the top entertainment, and um, you know, maybe bringing the price down uh, a little bit. But one of the things when you're talking about price. For people who leave their kids at home, you know, not everyone has family that they can leave um, kids with. So if you're if you're younger and you've got younger children and you want to go out to something like this and it's a an opportunity to go out to, as I said, not everyone has family that they can leave their kids to with. So they've got to then pay a babysitter. So sometimes it's you know cheaper to take your kids with you than employ a babysitter not only for the cost, but also finding babysitters because they're not that easy to find um, if you don't have family around. So all up, I, I was a little disappointed in the, in the price. I do understand, how, however, that we need to um, cover costs. And while 200 is great that we've sold 200 in only a short time, you know, there are a lot of people in our community who will not be able to afford to go at $80 a ticket, whether they have kids or not. But so, um, again, just expressing um, my opinion, um, and I do agree that we have to have a children's price in. I think the, as I said, I checked out the artists, and I think they will also appeal to a younger demographic. So I think those 16, 17 year old kids will enjoy. Um, those and as I said with younger you know people want to go and do a day out and they want to bring their younger kids you know they could stop and put the kids in the pool take them for a drive and sit and listen to the music thank you thanks councillor Erkins councillor Schumacher you got anything um probably just a question I just wanted to understand how much funding we actually attributed to the event mm. Deputy Mayor, there was a hundred thousand dollars in funding. Yep. Thank you. Um, no, I, I don't have anything to add to the conversation. I think it is a really, other than it is a really wonderful opportunity bringing those headline acts to the South Burnett. I know, um, you know, in terms of broader economic benefit of an event like that, if people are travelling to our region for that event, which I know a couple of my family members certainly are you know, that that will bring money into the region as well, which is a great outcome. So I do think um, it's amazing how much ec economic benefit can be generated from a headline act like that and having it at the dam really showcases our facilities and the work that's been done. I think it also demonstrates to the community what other events of this calibre could be um, held at that facility, which is really exciting. Um, I, I, I certainly think it's a, a wonderful opportunity for young people that 18 to 30 to take their families along or um, to, to be a part of an event like that, to experience a headline act. Um, I certainly know my family's really looking forward to it. Um, look, I'm, I'm really mindful of the, the sentiment from the staff that the event has to be cost neutral and um, you know, I certainly understand the comments made from councillors as well. Um, I can see that, you know, the importance of, of covering all those costs without it costing council, which was really what we had set out to do. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the only notes I had. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll leave it with the chamber to decide on a motion to put up. Councillor Duff. 
I think that we need to introduce the children under 12, no charge, make that youth 12 to 18, 40 dollars and over 18, 80 dollars, because I think um, it needs to be clarified and, yeah, just like um, councillor said, you might take your children to it and, yeah, at least then they, it's clear what, it, what it's going to cost. That's what we need to get that put into a resolution. Councillor Hanchin. Thank you, Acting Mayor. I would just bring to the Chamber's attention on the 28th of September, the event that's on, that will take the people that are going to the dam away from our event because they will not go to this event for $80 a child when across the hill, uh, and I encourage you to have a look at the events that are on over there for uh, a huge event, and all children under 12 are free. I'll leave it at that. All righty. So I guess everyone's had their opportunities. Anyone else got any more thoughts? Jen, you got you've done a great job. Yeah, <laughs> it, you've just made it harder to make a decision. That's all you've done, Kirst. Oh, uh, Councillor Schumacher. I just wanted to reinstate how much of a great thing this is. Oh. You know, this. I'm so, I'm sorry. This um, is such an amazing event. Like the. Um, Queensland government, all of their Facebook pages have lit up about Pink visiting Townsville. And, you know, I know how important a headline act like that is. I know the Wolf Brothers is no pink, but I certainly know from the um, involvement in Bacon Fest over the weekend how many families and young people came out to enjoy the bands and the music and company with each other. And at the end of the day, when we look at the goals and aspirations of that funding that we received, that was really the goal and aspiration was to bring our community together and I can see this event is really going to tick those boxes. I'm really grateful to the South Burnett Regional Council staff because I know when I go to this event they'll all be there on the ticket booths behind the bar, you know, they will have gotten up early to set up tents and marquees and a lot of those things are often unseen but that volunteering and that heart of our council is often on display when you go to this kind of event. So. I just wanted to remind everyone how excited we are about this event, what an amazing opportunity it is. And I really do hope to see lots of families out there, um, people of all ages enjoying the festival. I saw um, a grandmother actually on Saturday night dancing her heart out at Bacon Fest, which was amazing to see. So I think there's so much good that can come from music, dance, and I think this is such a positive and great thing for our region. And um, I know there will be economic benefits that flow from afar. So looking forward to camping out there and being part of it and I'm certainly happy to be on any volunteer roster if there is one circulating. No, there's not one person in this room that doesn't agree with one word you just said, Councillor Shoemaker, but what we need to do and the issue at hand is the entry point of admission fees. That's what we need to address. We want as many people there as we possibly can, like you say, of all ages. So. We need somebody to move a motion or this one that is present. The, the, yeah, and certainly in, in taking Councillor's point. So the, this was um, developed after the feedback that um, people are going to bring uh, bring kids, okay? Uh, accepted. So under 12, no charge, 12 to 18, half price, which is $40 and over 18, we, we remain with the $80. So that's, that's what's put forward as a recommendation. Okay, Mr. CEO. So if I say that I will move that, uh, so I will move that and do we have a seconder so that the uh, Council of Duff's throwing a hand straight through the screen. Yeah. All excited. So Councillor Henshin, yeah. So the, the the motion that I've put forward or put forward on behalf of everybody, the South Burnett Regional Council confirmed ticket prices for the day at the dam on the 28th of October as follows. Children under 12, no charge. Children 12 to 18, $40. Over 18, $80. That's moved by myself, second by Councillor Duff. We go to the vote. All those in favour? Um, oh, sorry, Councillor Erkins. Um, yeah. Last chance. So, yeah. I, I'm just a little concerned. If you have a 12-year-old, um, a they don't bring in any money. You know, they, they, they can't work or anything like that. They can't drive themselves or get themselves there with their friends. 
I really, if you're going to go for the $40 and charge with the kids, I would prefer for it to be 15, 15 and up to charge $40, under 15, no charge. You know, I just think if you're looking at families, I, I don't think a 13 or 14 year old are going to go out there on their own. They're going to be out there with parents. Even if you put in that, that they had to be accompanied by their parents so that you can't have kids, you know, parents dropping their 14 year olds and going out for nothing, but they go with their parents. But as I said, I think if you're, if you're a family and you've got a couple of teenage kids. It's a licensed event. They could not be there under age by themselves. I would think, otherwise we'd be yeah, in breach well, of well, license. Yeah, case, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in that case, I think you know, 15. I mean, I think if you have if you have a family raising kids, it's pretty expensive. When they get to 12, 13, and 14, you know, it's even more expensive. So I would prefer to see the children's age from 15 to 18, or under 15, get in for nothing. Fifteen to eighteen, forty dollars. The councillor Erkins, do you want to move a procedural an motion? An amendment. Well, I'm, I'm comfortable where that sits right now. So, what's, your, what's the rest of the council's thoughts on what I've just put forward under twelve, and what councillor Erkins has suggested move that up to fifteen, keeping in mind that this is targeted at that eighteen to thirty year old age group, wasn't initially set up for kids, but we've got the issue with the kids, and I'm comfortable with how that sits, because I think that's pretty fair I, and where I go. Councillor Erkins, yeah. Can I just add one more thing? If I, if I was going to something like this and I had a 15-year-old or a 14-year-old, I would prefer to have them coming with me to leave them at home. I mean, that's one of the, you know, that's another thing. And if I had to pay, if I had to pay $40 to bring them, you know, that's the, that's the, um, the other thing about it. Well, I'm comfortable with that, so unless, Councillor Henshin, we, we've got to wrap this up, and, yeah, I, and no, I don't mean to hurry it, but thank we you. do have another um, appointment at 10.30. Appreciate it, and I'll throw it to my colleagues here. Like, why not 16? Correct me. Like, do you not get a card at 16? Or were you saying 16, Councillor Lucas, or 15? Well, I was saying 15 and under 15. Well, does, would not 16, because do you not get a card at 16 and you get a licence at 16 and people at Sorry, I don't have kids, so somebody help me in this space, but is 16 a better figure, 16 to 18? Is that easier to police at the gate? An age thing, like how do you know they're, they're 12, how do you know they're 15? Whereas at 16, you, don't you, do you not have a licence or ability to get a licence or a card or some description of proof of age? Sorry, Deputy Mayor. Okay, so what we need to do, Councillor Erkins, do you want to move an amendment to the motion and then we go to that and we'll wrap it up. So put your motion forward, please. Yep. Uh, if I can just move an amendment to the children under 16, free, over 16 to 18, $40, and then adults over 18, $80. Okay, so Councillor Erkins has moved that the amendment as seen there, children under 16, no charge, children 16 to 18, $40, over 18, $80. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Henshin. So as an amendment, Mr. CEO, we go straight to the vote without conversation. Does anyone want to add anything before we go to the votes? Because that's certainly opened up a big margin and um, yeah, Councillor Shoemaker. Just confirming the motion that it reads, you know, that South Burnett Regional Council confirmed. Sorry, can I do a closing on that? <laughs> I think we're, we're all saying that the whole point of this is to get as many people there as we can. And I just think if you can have, if people can go with their kids up to 16 and not have to pay for their kids, they're more likely to go if they don't have to pay that $40. $40. So, you know, if the whole 
the whole point, the more people that pay to get in, the better. It's no point, there's no point in charging for those younger kids if, they, if then parents stay home because they can't afford. And if you've got two kids, that's another $80 if you've got three kids, you know, so on and so forth. I do believe that that is best to attract more people. All right. So we have the amendment there, moved by Councillor Erkin, second by Councillor Henschen. Um, hesitant, but I'm happy to go with the uh, Chamber if that's what they think. So the South Burnett Regional Council confirmed ticket prices for the Day at the Dam event on the 28th of October as follows. Children under 16, no charge. Children 16 to 18, $40. And over 18, $80. Sorry, I just want to confirm, you know, I do have children that would be going to the event. Um, I don't feel my conflict would be any greater than anybody else's, but I just, for the purposes of public perception, just want to confirm that I don't have a conflict here because I am the only one with school-aged children in the room. So is that a problem, Senior Mark? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's like a... Fees and charges, charge. yeah. Yep. So it's okay. setting a fees and so charges. Okay. We can note it, Councillor. Yeah. So Diana, we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. So we're setting a fees and charges, and actually, um, given it was a late one, uh, acting mayor. So before you vote on this one, if we're going to amend any of them, it's probably should actually in the first one too. That was in the rush to to bring it along today. Eighteen and over. So um, because yeah, eighteen and over and get rid of the over in front of the 18 and it'd be 16 to 17. So anyone who's licence age is full, full quid. Yep, done. That just tidies it up. No, oh yeah, yeah, if, if the amendment gets up or down when we can worry about it then. All righty, everyone's had their chance. We're gonna go to the vote on the amendment. Councillor Erkins moves, second by Councillor Henschen. The South Burnett Regional Council confirmed ticket prices for the day at the dam event on the 28th of October as follows. Children under 16, no charge. Children 16 to 17, $40. And 18 and over, $80. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, good discussion and a good outcome. And Jen? Okay, we're still not finished. Hang on, Councillor Duff, yeah, quickly. Anything? All right. So, right, now the amendment becomes the uh, initial uh, recommendation. So we go back, we've got to endorse that now, that the South Burnett Regional Council confirmed ticket prices for the day at the dam event on the 28th of October as follows. Children under 16, no charge. Children 16 to 17, $40. And 18 and over, $80. Go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. Good luck, Jen. I hope that hasn't distorted the waters too much for you. Um, it probably has, but anyway, thank you for coming in and uh, giving us the update, and well done, councillors. Uh, I move that we break for morning tea. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Henschen, all those in favour? Thank you. And we'll come back about, I don't know, we're going all right, so let's say 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock for those people online. Thank you. See you at 11.
Okay, welcome back everybody. And uh, I'd like to move that we go back into the general meeting, seconded by Councillor Henshin. All those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. Yeah, I did. Yep. So we now move to 17, uh, Portfolio for Regional Development, Development Services, Community and Social Housing, 17.1. And the officer's recommendation is that the South Burnett Regional Council, in accordance with S2361C1 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, enter into a licence agreement with the March IT Petrochemical Limited for part of Lot 59 on RP67068 for an initial term of three years with seven annual options for a rental amount of $3,625 plus GST per annum with an annual rental increase by 3% compounding annually thereafter for the balance of the term or preceding terms. A, approval for the use of council's electricity for the agreed amount of $438 plus GST per annum, with council reserving the right to review any excessive use of power during each term. And two, South Burnett Regional Council delegates to the Chief Executive Officer the power to negotiate, finalise and execute the licence to occupy between council and March IT Petrochemical Limited on terms and conditions the Chief Executive Officer reasonably considers are satisfactory to council. Do we have a mover? Thanks, Councillor Potter. Seconder, Councillor Henshin. Comments, Councillor Shoemaker. I might just add a couple of questions with this one. Um, first question, I just wanted to check because it's telecommunications equipment going on in the water tower. Is there a need for a development application for that? No. Um, and is this the only option that the company explored, or have they explored other options? Uh, through you, Acting Mayor. No, we, we don't have any visibility of what options analysis or other considerations they would have had regarding um, the location of this. But um, obviously, they, you know, they're, they're the peak body. They know what they're looking for, and what, you know, I'm only assuming that um, yeah, this is their preferred um, location. Location, and they would operate on behalf of the solar farm. Um, and do do we offer this kind of service to other industrial? Providers, is this a common kind of agreement that we have with others of this nature? Yeah, the um, this council and other councils. So there's infrastructure on our water towers. Uh, I think Sherberg. Uh, we've had conversations with previously, plus other providers, telcos. Uh, Aaron might want. Without having a detailed answer, it, it, answer it's not uncommon. Yep. And yeah, and certainly um, not uncommon. But Aaron. Yeah, through, through the chair, uh, we have a number of telco and other providers that uh, can make applications to us to, to use our infrastructure. Um, we don't always say yes, and, and sometimes we do put conditions on that. On It's done so on our terms very much at the moment, but um, we do have other providers, so we have other councils. We also have, I think we have Vodafone um, and some other telcos on, in different parts of the Shire as well. So um, it, it's not uncommon for someone to want to use our high ground to uh, enable their stuff yes thank you um i'm actually a little bit torn with this one certainly i can see it's an it's a pretty standard thing however um i think the uh, project proponent has delivered very little benefit to our community and um yeah hasn't necessarily been a good neighbor and so i'm just probably torn because i have had um, many conversations in regard to that um I understand the, it would be ideal for them to use our um, water tower and I guess I'm just not really sure, um, might be a little spiteful but I don't know um, in relation to some of the interactions I've had with constituents around that area, I'm not sure how um, supportive they would be as their representative of this so um, I can see it's one of the mill um, sort of thing but I guess they're just some of my feelings on this one based on the community I represent. Councillor Potter. Um, yeah, thank you, actually, Mayor. I'm just um, a bit, curious, bit um, concerned with regards to the electricity price, actually, because I don't know about you, but my electricity seems to be going up nearly every time I get a, um, an account. So, And I know it says an agreed amount of 438 plus GST per annum, and then it says it will look at excessive bills 
but I'm just wondering whether um, something else needs to be put in that with regards to electricity prices. And I know we do um, look at our electricity prices on a, on a reg fairly regular basis. And I just need to make sure that that electricity price will be the same right through for that for those um, seven years, I think, um, that they've got it for, seven to eight years that they've got it for. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. Manager Darrell or anyone or GM Meehan or anything, have you got anything around that electricity prices or anything, how that's come to that figure? Through, you, uh, through the chair, we'd have to check why that is. What I would, I would say there is if Council's happy, um, number two will we'll delegate to, to Marcus, the CEO, to negotiate on your behalf. So happy to take that feedback if Council approves the agreement. Um, we can um, have a review of that and ensure that we are cost recovering as a minimum through that through that period um, in line with number two. Thanks, GM. Councillor Erkins. Um, probably one of my concerns is because of the community um, backlash that we had on the tower that was going up at the rifle range, I'm just wondering whether some of our community may like to be, um, you know, consulted over, over this one because would this also have the same um, impact on those people and would they also have the same concern with this? Oh, I'm happy to answer it, no. Uh, well, whether they've got concerns or not, this is, uh, this is a piece of council infrastructure, <coughs> excuse me very much, that doesn't require development and, and I fully appreciate everyone has an opinion on certain topics and whether they want, but this is a decision of council uh, as to putting infrastructure for a telecommunications um, and certainly can appreciate, and, and when I read the report originally too, it, it twinged a couple of thoughts in my head which I won't go into in a, in a public domain, but how I rationalised it, I suppose, it's a, it, we don't know who the other telecommunication companies um, supply services to. So the request is a, um, there's some companies I probably would choose not to purchase from, but they still access Vodafone, Optus, Telstra, um, and yeah, it is it is a more an ethical conversation in my own head rather than a technical. But as I said, when I, when I authorise the report, it's a it's a technical request for a piece of council infrastructure that isn't unusual for us. <coughs> excuse me, us to do. I I, um, I understand the um, the infrastructure we can put on there, but what I'm looking at is the bad feeling that we also that we already have from our community on, in particular, the, that area. And I'm just thinking that if our, if, is it, is it a um, wireless type thing? Is it the same? I understand the differences between they're putting a new one up and this is a structure they just want to put it onto, but I don't think it was the, the complaints we had on the last one was more about what was going on top of it and the, the um, EM, yeah, yeah. Then this, this is so. These are generally direct line of sight. Now, again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not au fait with the technology they're using. <clears throat> um, if council is uncomfortable, just delegate it to me, because this is this is um, run of the mill type work for us. Um, and certainly, we've got, and, and again, I uh, fully appreciate and respect everyone's different opinions on on various levels of technology. We've already got this sort of infrastructure and the infrastructure that is on the new tower and upgrades of tower being done by telecommunications agency all across the region. So if we start down now a path of voluntarily consulting on these, um, you, will, you will literally grind these sorts of processes to a halt. Um, it has no, and I don't want to sound harsh, but it, it has no requirement for consultation. It's a direct line of sight. It could be it generally council's network. We run our own network, direct line of sight, very similar. Generally, they run by a microwave. Um, yeah, I don't know what this one would be, but quite often they're a microwave signal between, and they have to have direct line of sight. Again, again, getting out, getting out of the out of the of who they're servicing, 
but they have to have a direct line of sight to get from point A to point B. Okay. And so you put either towers or utilise existing infrastructure up. It is where it is. It's obviously in direct line of sight. They want to pay us a, a rate. Um, but yeah, no, I, I would be okay, I would be hesitant to consult on yeah. it. I would actually be quite um, recommend not to. To be more specific then, the people, if it's going to the solar farm, the people that are in that close proximity that already have issues with um, the impact the solar farm has had on it, will this have a detrimental effect on those people is probably more the question that I would like to ask. So if they're in mobile phone coverage already or they're in any form of microwave coverage already, does that already have a detriment? How long's a piece of string on that question? Council, I'm not qualified to answer, nor do I plan to, um, nor is it an answer for this council. There's technical reports and specialists that do that sort of thing. This is a direct line of sight communications tower from point A to point B. So uh, it's an aerial, not a mobile phone tower. Thank you. And just in regards, I, I'm happy to be corrected, but I thought there was conversation and opportunity. There was people up there had meetings and that around this water tower in the past. Is that right, GM? <coughs> yeah, uh, through the chair, just on the on the back of the, the CEO, uh, what he was saying there before. So just draw council's attention to the asset management implications elements in the report. So there is a um, there is a requirement there. Um, for them to provide notices and information along with the Telco Act. Um, the tower that they are talking about is correct. That is, that has got a 5G attachment or has got a 5G attachment plan to it is my understanding, uh, which is the one up through there. This one here will be a, an attachment to a tower similar to um, other networks within our region, um, which will basically be a line of sight for the, for the um, solar farm to transfer information to its, to its receiver and then send that information on. So, um, in, in line with that, it would be a question for councillors, do you want to allow the, the solar farm to attach their infrastructure to our water tower? Council Schumacher. Um, yes, well, quite frankly, my response to that is no. Um, and I have many ethical reasons why that is the case when they planned that site and that infrastructure. This should have come up and been discussed well before now. Um, the last solar panel, as I read in the paper, has now been affixed to the site. Um, and good planning and good conversation, good discussion with us would have actually already addressed this rather than after the fact. These are my own thoughts and views and certainly I think knowing as the Division 4 representative and the number of people in that area who have been impacted by um, that solar farm development. I personally would like to have seen more open, honest and upfront conversations with key stakeholders such as your local council about this requirement um, before shovels even went into the ground. So ethically, um, I'm, I'm not supportive of this. Um, certainly am supportive of telecommunications infrastructure. I've made that very clear in this chamber before. I am very torn about this um, as a representative for that area because I know firsthand how much heartache this development has actually caused and I'm really struggling to support um, and enable this to happen. So they're, they're my views. Um, and Yes, I would probably prefer they find another site or location and not drag our council back into this conversation about whether their farm should should be there or should be operating or or alike. I really do genuinely feel there has been limited economic benefit from the construction of that um, facility and I also feel that they have not always been very good neighbours and not engaged with their community in open faith. And unfortunately, as the local representative those community people have come to me time and time again, and um, you know I'm not employed by the solar farm to do their community relations. So I just feel that um, knowing what I know about that project um, and the contention in the area, um, yeah, I, I wish for our council not to be involved in anything that actually enables it.
Councillor Potter. Yep. I know it says it's for the Kingaroo Solar Farm, but we've got to remember it's actually March IT, Propriet MarchNet, that are actually applying for this. So um, it's the MarchNet or March IT, Propriet Limited that would um, that would benefit from this today. Councillor Duff, are you still with us? You gone? So Councillor Duff has left. Yeah. Um, difficult one. Totally understand exactly uh, Councillor Shoemaker's comments. Um, I just don't know. Obviously, going back to history, we voted as a council against it. They uh, they put a uh, an application in the state government. The state government approved it. Land, land court, state government. Um, yeah, um, certainly haven't endeared themselves to the community, but I guess now that that solar farm has been constructed, yeah. just yeah, I, um, just trying to need a little bit of time to. Th Council Erkins, take it away. Um, didn't we ask for a meeting with the solar farm people? Can I just ask where that has got to? Sorry, so, losing my voice, but yeah, I'll just have to follow up. I'm not sure where that's got to, Councillor. Um, not since the on-site visit, actually. They've been pretty quiet. I think, um, I think I'd like to, because uh, I understand what Councillor Potter is saying about the fact that it's somebody else's... Um, applied for it but they have applied for it with a to give it's for the solar fund they've done it i think i'd like to see it laid on the table until we meet with the solar um farm and get some more information on the whole um yeah the thanks whole... to the gm is the solar farm going to be the only beneficiary from from this infrastructure being placed on the water tower. Yeah, through through the chair, my understanding it's it is the um, the provider is providing the the infrastructure for the benefit of the solar farm. So yes, happy to be corrected by anyone else, but that's my understanding. The application by March IT or, or their company is to provide that connection for for the purposes of the solar farm's sole use. Yeah, thank you. So I guess in response to Councillor Erkins's comments, the issue at hand, if we bring the solar farm in, in regards to this, they're going to tell you what the benefits are for the solar farm. Like, there's nothing else for the community. Um, so I don't know what benefit we would get out of that to bring them in to address the situation. I think the matter at hand is what whether we support it or whether we don't. And this is a the motion that's been put forward, we either go through and vote on that or do you want to make an amendment or a procedural motion or something to what we've got so that we can, can move on? Because I don't see the benefit no, of Mr. bringing Kimmy, them in. Yeah, yeah I, under, I understand what you're saying, but it was a meeting previously to this that we have asked to have a meeting with um, the solar farm people. And, you know, I think I would prefer... Uh, myself, I would prefer to have a meeting with them um, prior to making a decision on this. So, as I said, I move we lay it on the table until after a meeting with the solar farm can be organised. So you're moving a procedural motion that yep. the item lay on the table until uh, further... Until after a meeting with yeah. the solar farm yeah. owners, I don't know what they what you would call them, management. With solar farm management, yep. Yep, do we have a seconder? Councillor Engine. No, we don't enter into any conversation. We go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Three. Against? Okay, so where's Councillor Duff? 
she's not here, is she? She's left the meeting. So we've got five people here. So in favour, we have uh, to leave it on the table, Councillor Erkins, Councillor Henshaw, and Councillor Jones. And uh, against, we have Councillor Spotter and Councillor Shoemaker. So the motion or the procedural motion has been carried three votes to two. So that now becomes the... Okay, that's done. So, okay. The next item up is confidential. Well, well, we have questions on notice nil and information section nil. And we go to 20 section, the confidential section 20.1 land purchase for Mount Rural and Reservoir. And the officer's recommendation that the council considers the confidential report listed below in a meeting close to the public in accordance with section 254J of the local government regulation 2012 and 20.1, the land purchase for Mount Rural and Reservoir. This matter is considered to be confidential under section 254JG of the local government regulation. The council is satisfied. That discussion of this matter in an open meeting would on balance be contrary to the public interest as it deals with negotiations relating to the commercial matter involving the local government for which a public discussion would be likely prejudice the interests of the local government. Do we have a mover? Councillor Erkin, second to Councillor Potter. Go to the vote. Those in favour? Unanimous. Thank you. Now go.
Okay, so I'd like to move now that we move out of confidential back into the general open meeting. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Henshin, all those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. So the officer's recommendation is uh, in regards to the land purchase for Mount Rural and Reservoir that South Burnett Regional Council note this report and delegate the authority to the CEO to purchase, or sorry, the authority to the CEO to to purchase the additional, yeah, to purchase the additional land to accommodate the new reservoir. So I'll read that out again. The South Burnett Regional Council note this report and delegate the authority to the CEO to purchase the additional land to accommodate the new reservoir. Do I have a mover? Councillor Potter, seconder. Councillor Shoemaker, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Unanimous, thank you. That brings the meeting to a close at 11.35. Thank you all for attending and thanks to anybody that is still with us online. And again, that brings the general meeting for August the 23rd to a close. Thank you. Enjoy.